Can I just quickly add before we begin, before people actually start typing, before they've even watched the video, I don't buy into all of this. I'm just making a video on it because it's a story. It's what journalists do. It's what the sun are doing. But you'll hear all my opinions as the video goes on. I think it's a farce, but we'll keep going anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Yes, it's been more than a week. There has been a lot of things to cover. I, I should have done a catch-up video. I should have a review of the season. I've been gone. I've been gone. There's no excuses. I've missed a lot, you know. And the time I've been away, Celtic won a historic treble treble. Uh, Neil Lennon was appointed Celtic manager. And uh, today's video, as you tell from the title, uh, we have had our transfer plans leaked. Now, we're going to cover it all. Quickly want to say I've been that busy, I, I, I've not had the motivation to make a video, it's been tough with the amount of fucking overtime I've been doing and work and such, yes, I don't do YouTube full time if you don't know this already, uh, and it's, it's really hard to find motivation when you've been working, you know, umpteen hours in a week, um, when you're not used to it, it just really takes the energy out of you and that's why I've not been doing videos, but hopefully, now that things have calmed down a bit more, I'll be back to doing YouTube videos. Now, what I know, I still want to hear from you because I feel like I've left it a bit late. Is would you like to see a 2019, sorry, 2018-19 season review? Would you like to see that come out? I would be going through the season month by month, talking about the ups and downs, um, and just basically covering what was an eventful season. If you want to see that video, let me know in the comments below. I don't know if it's worth my while making it now because you know I've waited so long and the season's been done for over over a week now. So if you still want to see it, let me know. But things are all good with Celtic. Because we won a treble treble and I didn't give my opinion on it and here's my opinion now. We're never going to see anything like that ever again unless we're going to win a quadruple treble then that'll be, that'll be outstanding. But we're never going to see anything like that ever again. It's historic, it's monumental, it's once in a lifetime. Drink it in. No matter how many negatives there might have been surrounding the season. We won a treble treble. Drink that in. And uh, the set, I mean I was still fucking hang hung over um, <laughs> for the last week celebrating that. So that's another reason <laughs> why we're only making videos. But today's video is over this recruitment meeting document leak that has been circulating, circulating around Twitter, which at first I looked at it and went, somebody has uh, sat on Microsoft Word, they have printed that themselves out and took a photo in the living room and tried to fill us all, but now it seems to be blown up uh, a little bit because the Sun have reported on it, the Record have reported on it, blah blah blah, yes, these sources are just as bad as Twitter, uh, the, the, the Sun to me has as much credibility as the toilet paper that I wipe my arse with. Look, but apparently Celtic are launching a probe and an investigation into how this sort of information has gotten out. So, my opinion on the document itself is very unclear. I don't know if it's real. I don't know if it's fake. The fact that Celtic are apparently launching a probe into it could suggest that it is real. But at the same time, I would take it all with a pinch of salt. Now, this is me saying this at the start of the video before the comments section goes mental. Like, Ryan, why are you believe in this? This is clearly made up by someone on a computer. A 12-year-old's made this. Look, I know it could be very much fake. But we're going to run through the document. And, and I'm going to basically talk my way through it. Because a lot of people might have not seen it. And, I mean, the main concern from Celtic fans generally on social media about this document is if it is real. If. Big if. If it's real. It shows a severe lack of ambition for the club heading into the 2019-20 season, which we'll talk about at the end of the video, once we've kind of ran through the document. The document goes through basically the whole first team, and uh, goes through position by position, what Celtic want to do, who they want to sign, who they're willing to let go. It's got a lot there. It starts right at the top of the letter by saying the attendees, attendees are, you know, they've got the they've got the initials there. You can see the likes of John Kennedy there, Neil Lennon there. Um, there, there seems to be a, a few names who were apparently at the meeting, Dermot Desmond seems to be one of them, it says DD, uh, Peter Law as well, so you know, it, it, it doesn't look real at all by any means, it looks like such a fake letter, but this whole probe thing is making everybody kind of think twice about it, my opinion is still unclear, and I take everything as it goes, when a rumour breaks and it looks realistic we're going to sign somebody, that's when I start looking into it, so I don't really listen to this shit, to be honest, and I would suggest the same thing, the Sun has got no credibility as I said, Let's hope that we're not falling by this letter. But we'll go through very quickly and then we'll talk about this whole lack of ambition thing that a lot of fans are banging on about. So it starts off obviously with goalkeeper. Ha happy with the current setup. May change if Gordon wishes to leave in the summer, which we have heard rumblings of over the last couple of days. Apparently Gordon is willing to take on a new challenge. As he knows he's not number one anymore. But if he doesn't leave, yes, I agree. Current setup's fine. Okay, move on. So gets to the right back position and, and, you know, at least, at least it says start on they did for the summer. Thank you. Tall Yan, unlikely to stay past loan. It looks as though he'll be going back. Uh, and it's, it's got a few options down there. It's got, uh, I mean, James Justin from Luton. I mean, we, we can surely do better than a Luton player. 
Tommy Smith from Huddersfield is down there. Lustig noticed the terminate contract on the 31st of May 2019. Now, the thing is, we have passed the 31st of May 2019. Apparently, this should I add, this letter is apparently from a meeting on the 2nd of April 2019. So, Lustig noticed the terminate contract on the 31st of May. That's not happened. So, if, I mean, if that's to happen, then we're, we're still kind of waiting here. Um, the contract has not been terminated. Lustig hasn't officially left the club yet. So, maybe that's an indication as to why we should not read into this. Why we should not care about it. I'm just here to cover it for the views. Um, but Lustig apparently going. Gamboa contract expiring. He'll be off. That's happened. And Ralston is apparently was getting monitored and we got a review at the end of the season. Now, the, the options I've got down here are, are Tommy Smith and James Justin. Now, to me, well, um, we can do better than that. That's that's not great, but we'll move on, we'll move on. It gets to the centre-back positions. I've got Bayata scrubbed out. Obviously, he's off he, He's off the paper. They've scrubbed him. He's gone. Benkovic, apparently Leicester City will confirm that Leicester will recall in the summer, which means he's gone. He's back to Leicester. High value of players to lose, potentially another loan... Uh, required to spread funds across the team uh, and then it's got a couple of options down there they've got Zanka from Huddersfield uh, and Tomeroy from Derby who's on loan from Chelsea once again very very big lack of quality names in there but there has been murmurs of this uh, Mexican uh, is it Mexican guy coming in the summer I forgot his name Alvarez is it who looks very very good who apparently has a 7 million pound release clause no mention of him on the paper but yet Celtic are apparently ready to bid for him so once again should we be following this page gets on to the, the left back positions Tierney to stay of course he's a Gary contract extension to be considered which it was considered but then he turned down um, so I mean God knows and then I've got the option of Perod from Paris FC once again not a name we can recognise. Number six position, Baton returning, Kuasi possibly loaned out in the summer. Get on to the other central midfield positions and Cham considering letting go if acceptable to offers received. There has been a number of discussions about whether or not, and I've seen on Twitter that Celtic will let players go subject to a, a, an acceptable fee being offered to us. And then Cham could very well be one of those options. Maybe I caught, I caught this paper. Yes, he is. They'll consider letting him go. Which I understand. But we'll keep moving on. Then they've got options down here. For Arabo from Charlton. Harper from West Brom. And then they have scrubbed out McTominay from Manchester United for a season-long loan. But with it scrubbed out, which is all that's off the paper. Just like the rest of them are probably off the paper. Um, number seven, we has done well. Uh, and got he's gone. So this, and there's the phone. Of course, somebody, you know interrupts when I'm trying to frantically go through this so I can give my opinions at the end. Weah is gone. This was made on April 2nd, so yes, he was still with the club at the time. What it did say was done well, but uh, they're considering the possibility of extending the loan. That possibility is apparently low. Uh, Marin Schwed is on the list, and Arzani is apparently to rejoin the group in the summer. On to the left mid position, Sinclair, the contract option, spoken to agent. Yes, they knew that they got that done. Barker uh, from Manchester City, who, if you remember, was at Hibs last season, was apparently being considered for Celtic uh, and Hayes who are wanting to review at the end of the season which so he will be staying then on to the strikers I mean you've got uh, Edward is there they don't know a buck apparently hard to keep from West Brom they were going to uh, monitor the Lee Griffiths situation and such and then they've got the options down of Moppy from Brentford and Moussé I think that's how you pronounce it from Bournemouth um, two options which once again not the quality that I believe Celtic should be looking for Um and I, that's pretty much it. It goes through position by position. Then it talks about kind of like Gutman and Perez and such coming in at the end. Obviously, the young guys from America who probably aren't going to offer the squad too much, uh, in all honesty. I mean, they're players who are very, 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 very much rookies. And it will take a lot of adjusting for them to probably come over and play here. Very different to the style of soccer in America. But the lack of ambition, if these are true, if these leaks are true, yes, they're not going to pound me in the comments saying these letters are fake, these letters are fake, blah, 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 blah. I know, I, I know they're not probably real, but if the Sun, which, or the record, or whatever source else is, is, is trying to confirm to us that these are real and Celtic are launching an official probe, an official investigation into how these documents got out, we should be severely concerned in the, in the next season because... Every single player, every target on that list that we are looking at and considering is not of the quality that we want. Um, and that's the honest truth. I think there's parts of me that believe we should just maybe, for the next two years, just take the safe approach. Go for maybe some older names. Not saying go for 35-year-old men who are retiring for the Premier League. I'm not saying that. But go for players who have established themselves at least a bit. 26, 27 years old, spend a couple of million pounds. We want to secure what we've been chanting about for the last 10 years and these are not players who I believe are going to be the 
the caliber that are going to deliver the stat. Now, I know I'm saying that, and then you look at players like Moussa Dembele, who he signed for £500,000 from Fulham, who were in the championship at the time. And you look at Edouard, who was an outcast at PSG, came and done a fantastic job. Yes, sometimes these players do work out for the best. I mean, you look at Wanyama and Van Dijk, we picked up from the middle of nowhere. Both of them just played in a fucking Champions League final. Sometimes, yes, maybe we just do have to have faith in these players, but it's just at that point now, where is it worth taking a risk? Because now we are in a serious quest to go and get 9 and 10 in a row, and a lot of fans aren't even backing the man in charge for 9 and 10 in a row. Neil Lennon hasn't got the greatest of support behind him. A lot of people were very angry at the appointment of Neil Lennon as manager. And I myself wasn't jubilated by it, but I was willing to stand by him. But we need players who are going to be able to guarantee us both 9 and 10 in a row, and probably a decent show in Europe. Yes, what I've said in the channels before, I don't give a fuck about Europe as long as we get 10 in a row over the next two years. But at the same time, we don't want to get embarrassed. We, don't want, to be, we want to make the group stages of the Champions League. We missed out on that. We've seen how, you know, how much difference it makes to you know the, the fans and how much attention we pay how many people turn up to games and the atmosphere at games we want to be we belong and we want to be in the champions league and we need players who are going to be able to deliver that now right now we've got a squad which is depleting like that there's players leaving left right and center we need to replace them quickly we have to take action because before you know it we're going to be back in these champions league qualifiers so work has to be done soon and yes i'll be reporting that when rumors and such come out i'll come on and give my opinions and such in the channel will go as time goes on but if this document is any indication as to what Celtic will be doing this summer, and let's hope it's not, which I don't think it is, but if it is, are we in trouble? That's the question I pose to you. I believe we have got the quality in our squad to go and win 9 in a row, but it's gone further than that. And it depends on what the teams around us do, because the last couple of years, the teams around us, all 11 of them, have improved, and we haven't. And is that going to be the case for the second, maybe third season in a row? Are the teams around us going to improve while we stay with the same squad? and even sign players who aren't good enough to be in the squad. This document hopefully doesn't indicate much, and hopefully it is a farce, hopefully it is just a load of rubbish, but we'll, we'll only be able to tell by time. So let me know your opinions of it in the comments below. Um, aye, and I'll see you all next time.